This lecture is on applications of systems of equations. In order for you to understand this section, you must first review on substitution method and elimination method, okay? And make sure you totally know how to solve a system if we give you the system of equations. Um, because in this section on 4.5, this is 4.5 in our book. And in this section, you will notice that the systems are not given to you. And instead, what we do is we give you a problem, okay, like a word problem, and you are supposed to lift the information from the problem and write up your own system, okay, so it's the difficulty in setting the system, and when you do that, you will be able to solve afterwards, either by substitution method or by elimination method. So, um, instead of me writing the problem, I'm going to get you to refer to your textbook. So if you can turn to your textbook, I'm looking at exercise 4.5. And this begins from page 213. So if you can turn to page 213 right now, I am looking at question number 8. So, turn to the question... Um, and look at the question carefully, and you notice what the question says is this. A pile of 80 coins consists of nickels and dimes. So you notice in this question, there are two unknowns, okay? One for nickels and one for dimes. So let's start by saying number of nickels is N, and number of dimes is D. So that's my two unknowns. Okay, so you don't have to use X and Y all the time. You can use N and D for nickels and dimes in this case. So what you're told on the first sentence is that the number of nickels and the number of dimes make up 80. So here we are talking about pieces of coins, okay, and there are 80 of them. So the first equation is the number of nickels plus the number of dimes is 80. But the thing is this, um, if I tell you the table has 80 coins, and their nickels and dimes, it really doesn't mean much because I don't know how much that is. I actually have to know how many are nickels and multiply it by the face value of the coin. So when you multiply 5 cents to nickels, that gives it the worth. Okay, so your number of nickels, you times 5, as in 5 cents, and the number of dimes, they're each worth 10 cents, so that's when you times 10, and this gives the money, the total amount. And in this question, you're told the total amount is $7.70. Now, since this, by writing 5 and 10, I'm using cents on the left. Then on this side, I also have to convert it to cents. So that's when you have to remember that $7.70 is 770 cents. Because a dollar is 100 pennies. Okay, so think like that. So that becomes my system of equation right there. And it's up to me what method I want to use, and um, if it's up to you as well. Okay, so I just prefer to use, say, I choose to use um, elimination. Okay, so I'm going to focus on the n, and I'm telling myself that I need to um, make the two coefficients opposites. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the first equation I'm going to multiply by negative 5. And what happens is this is going to be multiplied by negative 5, this 2, and this 2. So it's going to be negative 5n, negative 5d, equals negative 5 times 80 is negative 400. As for the second equation, I'm not doing anything to it, so it's going to read 5n plus 10d equals 770. Okay, so now I'm going to add the two resulting equations. And the chosen variable, in this case n, is going to cancel. Okay, they cancel because they're opposite in coefficients. And so what I'm doing is I'm adding the d's. Negative 5 and plus 10 makes it positive 5d. And negative 400 with 770 makes it 370.
Now to find D, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And what happens is D is equal to 370 divided by 5 is going to come up to be 74. So just as any system of equation, there are two unknowns means you need to have two um, solutions, right? Solutions to each of the unknowns. So, so far we've only found D. We now need to find N. And it's up to you which equation you like to use. I just picked the easier one in this case. It's n plus d equals 80. So I've just found d to be 74 means I'm, put, I'm putting 74 into the d. So n plus 74 equals 80. So if you subtract 74 on both sides, it makes it n equal n equals 6. Okay, so if you stop there, you're still wrong or more like it's not complete. So make sure you answer to the question. And since the question is asking you for number of dimes and nickels, that's where you say there's 74, um, D is dimes, okay, and six, and in this case, six nickels for N. And that's the answer we need. And you can always check your work, okay. Um, think about it, 74 dimes, 10 cents is each coin, so it's $7.40. And six nickels, so this is seven dollars and forty cents. Six nickels is thirty cents. And if you add that, true enough, it's seven dollars and seventy cents, and the coins is eighty coins. So you can always check when you do word problems. So what I've just shown you is number eight. Um, if you want to do similar ones, you should work on numbers nine, fifteen, seventeen, and nineteen. Okay, so try these problems. They're similar to what I just showed you. The next type of word problems I need you to look at is like number 10. So that's found on page 214, if you turn to the next page. Um, in this question, you are told that the total cost of 8 buckets and 5 mugs is $92, and the cost of 5 buckets and 8 mugs is $77. Can you find the cost of 1 mug and 1 bucket? So you notice the unknown in this case is what's the cost of one mug and what's the cost of one bucket. Okay, so let's call this M and let's call this B, for example. So what happens is this is M dollars for a mug and B dollars for a bucket. Now when you choose to buy eight buckets, that's going to cost you 8B. And when you buy 5 mugs, that's going to cost you 5M. And when you add that together, it becomes your total cost. And in this case, it's given to be $92. Now in the next sentence, or yeah, the next sentence you're told the total cost of 5 buckets. So you choose to buy 5 buckets instead, so that's going to cost you 5B. And 8 mugs, so that's 8M. And that's uh, a total of $77. So you notice there's no need to put um, dollar sign because the B's and the M's and the dollars, they're all in dollars too, okay? So there's no need to put units here. And at this point, I'm looking at this and I'm trying to solve it, okay? So um, it doesn't matter which variable you're trying to eliminate. It looks just as bad. So let me just eliminate the B's, for example, okay? So the first equation, I'm going to multiply by negative 5. And the second equation, I'm going to multiply by positive 8. My objective is to get it to look at 40. Okay, so both is going to mean at 40, one is negative and one is positive 40. All right, I'm multiplying the entire equation by negative 5, so that's going to give me negative 40b, negative 25m, equal... negative 460 and then the second equation I'm multiplying by 8 
So that makes it 40B plus 64M equal... Six sixteen. So when I add the two equations, the designated variable is cancelled, and so let's deal with the remaining variable. And you have sixty four minus twenty five, which makes it thirty nine m, and that's equal to six sixteen minus four sixty, which came up to be one fifty six. So now if I continue to divide both sides by 39, I get m to be 4. So all it tells me is that the mug costs $4. I now need to find how much the bucket costs. So I'm going to substitute into any of the equations. So let's pick this one. It doesn't matter which one. You can just pick one equation. And what I'm going to have is 5b plus 8 times m, and since m is 4, so it's 8 times 4 equals 77. 5b plus 32 is 77, so 5b 77 minus 32. So what you end up with is 5b is equal to 45, and if you divide both sides by 5, it tells you b is 9. So, as always, when you do a word problem, don't stop there. You actually need to finish off with a statement or something of a similar nature. So, answer to the question and say something like, cost of one mug is $4. Cost of one bucket is $9. Something like that. Okay, so you do need to answer to the question. Okay, so let's get you to try some similar types of problems. And can you work on number 11 and number 12? They are of a similar nature. So just as a reminder, um, there are a few types of word problems you need to deal with, okay? So, so far I've gone through two. Okay, let's try uh, the next type of word problem, which is something of an uh, investment problem. And in this case, I am looking at... Number 18. So if you look at number 18, we are talking about an investment problem. So um, in investment problems, let me just remind you, if you are interested in the earnings, you will have to think about the rate, as in what percentage are you making, and that has to be multiplied by your investment. Okay. So if you want to know the earnings, you have to take the rate times the investment. So if you look at number 18, you have a man that invested $3,500, part of it at yearly interest of 4%, and the rest at 5%. So think of it as he has two investments. Okay, so he has two investments, and you have to think of it as what is the amount invested. So in your first investment, let's say the amount invested is X dollars and the other one is Y dollars. Okay, so this is investment number one, investment number two. So he has invested X and Y dollars. And what you're told is that what is his earnings? Okay, his earnings. 
Now, if you look at the formula up there, so to, for you to find the earnings, you have to think in terms of the rate multiplied by how much you invested. So you are told in the first investment he made 4%, and in the second investment he made 5%. Okay, so if you talk in terms of earnings, 4% is 0 0.04, but that's only a percentage. You have to multiply by, that's only a rate. You have to multiply by the amount invested, and in this case, it's X dollars. So your earning is actually 4% of X dollars. Same here. The second investment is 5%, so it's 0 0.05, and it's out of Y dollars. Okay, so you are told that the total invested is 5,000, I'm sorry, 3,500, which means that your X plus Y makes out $3,500. And in terms of earnings, his total earning for both investment is $153, which means that 0.04x plus 0.05y, and those are your earnings from the two investments, and you are told is equal to $153. So I'm looking at the second equation, and I'm telling myself I don't want to deal with decimals, so what I'm going to do is to multiply the entire equation by 100. So when I do that, the equation is now going to read 4x plus 5y equal 15300. So 15,300. Okay, so I'm going to try to use elimination method. So I'm going to multiply this equation by negative 4. And why do I choose 4 is so that when I multiply, my x's match, okay? But when I do minus 4 to the x, I have to do negative 4 to everybody else. So y is going to read negative 4y, and 3500 is now going to read. Negative 14,000. So now if I were to add these two equations, the x's cancel, um, but the y's, they actually reduce to become positive 1y, and 15,300 minus 14,000 makes it 1,300. So I'm going to use one of the equations to solve the remaining variable. I'm going to pick this one. x plus y is equal to 3,500. And since y is 1300, I'm going to have x plus 1300 equals 3500. So 3500 minus 1300 makes it 2000, what is it, 2200. Okay. So there you have it. Those are your two investments. And make sure you answer to the question. And so the question is asking you how much did he invest at each rate? So 2,200, that's the X. So make sure, so that's where the low chart helps. Okay, the chart in the top right here kind of helps you um, figure it out. And you've just found X to be 2,200 and that's for 4%. So 2,200 dollars um, invested at 4%, okay, and um, the Y, which is 1300, the investment is at 5%, so 1300 invested at 5%, I guess I should say was invested, so 2200 was invested at 4%, 1300 was invested at 5%, and that becomes the answer to the question. Okay, um, so if you want to try similar problems, um, you should be working on numbers 13 and numbers 21. The last type of problems that um, I would like to talk about 
is uh, mixture problems. Okay, so that's number 23, and this is what you call mixture problems. So for mixture problems, um, this usually happens um, in the form of you wanting something, but you don't have it. So if you look at number 23, for example, a pharmacist wants 1,000 ounces of 12.2 alcohol solution. So it's like you have two different types of solution, which is not exactly what you want. Okay, What he wants is 12.2% alcohol solution, and he needs 1,000 ounces of it. That's what he wants. But instead, what he has is something of 8% alcohol and something of 15%. So the first thing I need you to observe is look at the containers. The two containers that he has, one has too much, okay, more than he needs, and the other one has less than he needs. So something too much, too potent, and something too diluted. But what he wants is something in between, okay, something of in between nature. So he needs this amount of it, no more, no less. And since you don't know how many ounces of 8% is needed, and how many ounces of y percent, 15% uh, is needed. So that's our two unknowns, x and y. So the first equation is where you um, take the amount, and the amount of both containers has to make up exactly 1,000 ounces. The second equation is where you talk about the true alcohol content. So if you look at the first solution container, it's only made of 8% alcohol, and so the true content alcohol is really 8% of X. And this second container is 15% of Y. And this you hope to get 12.2% of 1,000 ounces. Okay, so you notice that the percent sign is everywhere. So you can get rid of it once and for all. So two ways you can do this. You could just directly use percent and call it 0.08x plus 0.15y and equals to 0.122 um, times of 1000. You could do that because that's what percent means. And then afterwards, you multiply by a power of 10 to get rid of all the decimals. Now, if you look at the decimal places, okay, this one is the maximum. And so I'm going to multiply by 1 thousand okay just to get rid of all the decimals for example and so what i end up with is um 80x plus 150y and um the last one is going to be 122 but multiplied by 1000 okay so what i have is 80x plus 150y equals to 122,000. Alright, now all this is coming from the second equation, which is the true alcohol content. And I still have one more equation to play with right here. And I'm going to multiply this equation by, in this case, I'm going to choose to multiply by negative 80. And why is 80 chosen? Is so that I can eliminate the x's because the coefficients are now opposite in sign. Uh, but I can't just multiply 80 to the x, I have to do it to the y, and I have to do it to the number as well. So it's going to be minus 80y and negative 80,000. So when you deal with problems like this, be careful of the zeros. Make sure you line them up, okay, all the place values. So 150 minus 80 is going to give me 70y. And 122,000 minus 80,000 is 42,000. So I'm going to divide both sides by 70. So this is where I'm going to remind you the zeros can cancel, right? So long as it matches one from the top, one from the bottom. And then the 7 and the 42 becomes a 6. But don't forget there's two more zeros here. So the Y is really 600. Okay, so now I'm going to use the equation that I have in the box, which says x plus y has to be 1,000, 
And knowing that y is 600 tells me that x plus 600 must make up 1000. And if I subtract 600 from both sides, it tells me x has to be 400. So to finish it off, make sure you answer to the question. So you have to say something like 400 ounces at, say, um, let's see, x is 8%. Uh, eight, eight so 400 ounces at 8% alcohol. Okay, and um, read the question carefully. You notice that in this question, they did not ask you for the amount for both types. They only want to know uh, how many ounces of the 8% is required. Okay, so in this case, that's all we need. Okay, so um, let's try similar problems and try 25, 27, and let's try 29 as well. 